Hello and welcome back. Today we've got my latest purchase from the Royal Mint. There's going to be a fair few of these videos to come. I've got another three off to the side of the £5 coins that have come out recently and also the latest one that came out uh, yesterday, today, yesterday, uh, the John Logie Bird 50p, which I'm really excited to get. This one should be my King Alfred the Great £5 coin. I'm quite excited to see this one because having looked at it initially, I wasn't too keen on it, but I've read more into it uh, in terms of what's behind the design, and hopefully the bump inside the packet will explain more and we'll be able to uh, put aside and find out whether we like it or not. But let's get into the box. Okay, so we've got a load of bump. Seems like more bump than usual. That was a little promotional magazine as well. There's the coin. There's the bunk one. Sling all this out of the way if we don't need those. So, silver proof there. We'll get into that momentarily. But this is the coin itself. So it's not the newest £5 coin because there's been a whole spate. The last four or five weeks, I swear, we've had a new coin every single week. But it's really exciting. Uh, but they do seem to be a lot of £5 coins at the moment, which I know is not everyone's favourite coin, but I think they're very, very cool. So this is King Alfred the Great. I was really excited about this one because King Alfred the Great's capital was uh, Winchester, which is just down the road from me. Um, you've got Alfred, Alfred the Great, uh, Alfred, lots of statues for, to Alfred the Great. There's the Great Hall as well with the uh, King Arthur's Round Table, obviously repainted by Henry VIII as well. So very, very cool. But there is the design itself, which initially I thought, huh? What? What's going on here? Because, um, yeah, it looks a little bit basic. So my understanding, so the d designer for this design also did the Magna Carta £2 coin and the Battle of Hastings 50p. Um, and they specialised in doing art of the time. Uh, so this is a recreation, and I think we're going to get into more of it, a, a um, an item, a, a gemstone for in the Ashmolean Museum. Again, fairly lo local to me in uh, Oxford. Um, which, yeah, is the basis of the design of this coin. But there we go. Very, very cool. To be fair, now I've got it in my hand, I'm liking it more than I liked it having seen the picture online. Obviously, I assume this is Alfred the Great here on the pack as well. On the back, we've got some information. So it says, From the defence of his kingdom to his far-sighted reforms, Alfred the Great paved the way for the United Kingdom we know today. This five pound coin celebrates a king who displayed many qualities we would expect to see from our modern monarchy. 1,150 years since his ascension to the throne. Very cool. And here we have uh, details about it. Reverse designer is John Bergdahl. I, I assume you pronounce it like that. My apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. But no, it's a very cool coin, I think. I am liking it much more in the flesh. It's a similar sort of issue with the 2019 Paddingtons. When I initially saw the design, I thought, really? That's the design? But um, yeah, I am more than more than happy with that. I think it's very, very cool. Whilst we're talking about bunk coins, uh, the lovely people over at the Coin Club have been sending me their latest entry into selling uh, brilliant uncirculated coins. That's what a bunk coin is, a brilliant uncirculated coin. So it's struck to a higher quality than that of a circulating coin. Um, so they are the cheapest way to buy new brilliant uncirculated coins. You can get five pound coins for eight pounds 99. Links will be down in the description to head on over and if you want to purchase a King Alfred the Great at the cheapest rate possible. Um, they also are doing 50p coins. Uh, they were two pounds 99. Can you believe it? A bunk 50p for two pounds 99. It's incredibly cheap. Um, um, I'm not sponsored in as much as I don't get any financial incentive uh, to send you over to them, but they are sending me the bunk coins as they come in new. Uh, but uh, for those kind of prices, it's about the size of a debit card, the packaging. You've got some information on the reverse. Actually, you can see the reverse of the coin, which we don't because I don't open my bunk pack, so they stay securely in there. They come in these little packagings, and they normally send you a little pack of sweeties as well, which is even better. Um, now, the coin itself is displayed just like this. So that is the coin itself right there. Obviously, you shouldn't be touching bunk coins, but there we go. Uh, similar sort of packaging to a Strike Your Own, um, in, uh, without the sort of a cover over the top of it, obviously. But no, very, very cool. And um, at the moment, only uh, this year's five pound coins and 50 piece have come out from them in this style. Uh, but hopefully, I imagine when we start getting two pound coins as well, we'll get them from them as well. But uh, as I said, um, you can't go you can't go wrong with this. It's you can spend you, well, you spend less money and get more coins overall. So I think it's a great thing, bringing competition to coin collecting making it more affordable to everyone because if the packaging the raw packaging like this isn't what's important to you if you just want the coin if you're going to put it in your own collection your own storage thing why pay that why pay full whack for a royal mint pack when you can get 
a brilliant uncirculated one to the same quality as this coin in one of these packets. So there we go. Links will be down in the description for you to check out as well if you so wish. That being said, let's get into the Pièce de Résistance. So again, the sort of standardised packaging, which I'm liking to be fair. Um, much more consistency and sort of sizing of packaging recently of, the, of these coins. Um, the one thing I would, I think I would change up is a little bit, maybe a little bit more um, customization for coin releases. Obviously, we have got a bit of customization there. So yeah, maybe maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not too bad. So this is the King Alfred the Great 2021 UK five pound silver proof coin. So we'll get into this one. As ever, it comes with a little bit of bump. I'm going to flick through this. If you want to pause and read it at your own pace, feel free to. And I will try my best not to cover up any important parts with my thumbs. There we go. I wonder if we can have a mention about Winchester in there. Ah, here we go. Design. Sculptor John Bergdor has worked on many designs for the Royal Mint and is one of the few artists who still presents his work in plaster. For this coin, his medieval style design was directly inspired by the Alfred Jewel and also includes punch lettering, an effect that was painstakingly recreated by our product design team and reflects the style of the period. Oh, I see. So punch lettering, is that the actual lettering of the words then? Maybe it is. Very cool. So yeah, the, um, the what was it? The Alfred Jewel, I believe is housed. Oh, there it is, right there. So there we can see, that is the inspiration behind the design. So if we get the coin itself, are we going to fit these all in one shot? There we go. So there we go. I think that would have worked pretty well as a sort of a, a coloured coin. Recreating the colours on that. The Priceford Alfred Jewel is a piece of rock crystal set over gold enamelling from Alfred's reign, which was found in North Perthiton with the inscription, I'm not gonna pronounce that, goodness gracious. Translate to Alfred ordered me to be made. It is believed the object was made for the king himself. Very cool. It was least about King Alfred being born. His ascension to the throne in 871. Long, long time ago, isn't it? Goodness gracious. Diplomatic treaty, okay. The monogram penny. Oh, okay, so maybe it's a must be a coin from his reign then. Silver coin pe featuring the name L V N Donia, Latin for London, and a crude but characterful portrait of the king. It is an important artifact in the royal mint's history, and can be traced back to Alfred the Great's reign. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The revival of learning. Is this the statue that's in Winchester? Hmm. It doesn't really say on that, does it? But there we go. Very, very cool. And nice to have a local bit of history, fairly local to me, um, on a coin as well, which is really, really exciting. The coin itself though. Let's have a look. Oh, I can get him out. There he is. Isn't that just superb? Well, that sets my mind at ease. I like this coin. I like it a lot now. With a bit more of the back history of the coin, rather than just looking at purely the design, um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Interesting, also a, a sort of a, a glimpse into what art was like way back when. Obviously, we've got uh, Jodie Clark's portrait of the queen. And again, these five pound coins. Oh, what's, is this an edge inscription? It looks like there is an edge inscription. It doesn't look like it's a milled edge. That's interesting. Maybe it'll say something more in the little certificate of Diddly Dees. Now, wow, wait, that is a low number. Goodness gracious, this must be the lowest number I've ever had. Whether low numbers have any impact on sort of values, I have no idea. I never buy coins as an investment. I buy them for my collection. Five pound coins tend to be a low mintage though. So a maximum mintage for this coin of 2,260. Uh, in this presentation, a max of 2,250. So there were 10 that were distributed elsewhere. It doesn't mention an edge inscription 
on this. It normally would do, like on two pound coins, it would say what the edge inscription is. Ooh. A bit of mystery and intrigue. Can we see maybe a bit clearer? It's definitely a milled edge on the bunk. I really want to see if that is an edge inscription now. But I don't want to get it out of its packaging. It's a sealed case. Let me just see if I can eyeball it. It's hard to say. There definitely are letters in the description. It's not a milled edge. Uh, G R E A T, maybe? I don't know if it's upside down, that can't be it. I don't know. I can't tell. Well, that's a little bit of a mystery and intrigue as to what that could be. I'm really tempted to open it and have a look, but I don't know. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be opening these cases. They're sealed for a reason. No, I can't. I can't. I was going to, but I can't. I really can't. I will have to do some research, but uh, obviously if you've got a silver proof and you've already popped it out of its packaging and <laughs> had a look, do let me know in that down in the comments. Uh, but no, I'll have to. That's intriguing. Bizarre that the silver proof has a different edge inscription to the bunk one. I don't think I've ever come across that before. Intriguing stuff. And number four. Wowee. How exciting is that? Per on a personal level, again, probably will not have any impact on value. Five pound coins take forever to sell out as well, if they'd even do sell out. Um, so they're probably still available to purchase. But uh, no, that's very, very cool. Um, but as ever, again, a massive thank you to Coin Club for your offering. They will have the King Alfred the Great £5 coin available to buy in the bunk packaging. So you go, this got a milled edge on this one too. Hmm. Interesting stuff. But no, I'm quite chuffed with that because it was a coin I wasn't particularly excited. I was excited when we heard in the Royal Proclamation we're going to get a King Alfred the Great £5 coin. I wasn't so excited when I saw the design. I wasn't too pleased with it. But having seen, now had it in my hand, done a bit of research, I think it's a really cool coin. So do let me know down in the comments what you prefer, the silver or the bunk. There's not much in it, to be fair. A little bit more design on his tunic. Sort of more depth to the design. And maybe there's a little, is that a hat he's wearing, I think? And the silver, that sort of frosting adds a little bit to it. But I think the bunk is beautiful too. So there we go. My mind has been changed. I always try and reserve judgment until I get the coins in my hand. I avoid watching everyone else's reviews of the coins to not colour my own opinion of a coin. But um, yeah, not. I'm very, very impressed with it. My, my opinion has been completely turned around now having the coin in my hand. Uh, but do let me know what you prefer, the bunk, the silver, or what coins are you excited about seeing? I've got my, what have I got over to the side? I've got my Peter Rabbit five pound coin. I've also got my Mr. Men, the third one of that series. I had to cheat, I had to get my phone out to check. Yeah, King Alfred the Great was the first one. They've got the Peter Rabbit five pound coin, the Queen's Beasts 11th coin, the third and final Mr. Men for the year. And John Logie Bard is on his way. Hopefully will be up on next Tuesday, so stay tuned for that. But as ever, all that leads me to do is thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time for more coins. Bye.